Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, July 10th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. Well, the great news just keeps pouring in, huh, Jonah? Uh, yesterday, the Big Ten announced it will play a conference-only schedule. This fall for football in 2020, uh, I guess that's better than them saying they're going to push it back to spring or canceling the season, but this means the games against Bowling Green and at Oregon and Buffalo have been canceled. Jay Book, just what's your reaction to this news? I'm actually really excited that they announced this because there, there's been so much uncertainty as you see uh, all around the country. A lot of teams are having players testing positive. The fact that the Big Ten is out in front with this, it leads me to believe that you're going to see majority of the other conferences following suit here. And I will take this and run with it any day of the week. If you're telling me that uh, Ohio State's still going to get nine or ten Big Ten games in, I will take that all day, every day. Uh, it's going to be interesting, day because what you're essentially going to have is those, those marquee games are going to be canceled out of the books. So you can see multiple uh, undefeated teams in the conference. I have put on Twitter yesterday what happens if you have a scenario where Ohio State is undefeated, Alabama's undefeated, Clemson, Oklahoma, and Oregon. Who gets left out of the playoffs? That, because in those type of situations where you're canceling those marquee games, it's going to leave a lot of programs uh, in a position to run the table if you have the, the right amount of talent. And I don't think this news yesterday came as a big surprise. You know, we've been saying on the show, we've been, you know, talking about what might happen with college football for the last three to four months, obviously. And, you know, the ebbs and flows were, you know, I was worried for a while, then I was supremely confident and then have been worried for a while. Um, you know, but it's just interesting when you look at this, um, you know, it's not a big surprise because I think lately we've been saying on the show, in fact, I know I've been saying lately on the show that this was probably the most likely scenario if we're going to have a fall season was they were going to at least push it back, have a truncated season. I wrote a column about that earlier this week as well. So not a big surprise. And the Big Ten, as usual, they're the leaders here, Jay Book. They're the first ones to do it. But um, and maybe I'm just maybe that's just my opinion on it. Do you agree that you're not really surprised by all this? I am not surprised at all. It's been a lot of smoke for quite a bit of time here that uh, the conferences are just going to try to keep it regional to try to limit the amount of uh, travel. I'm just happy that they finally made it official. The thing with college football that's been really keeping people on the edge of their seat is we haven't seen a game plan. What's the plan here? Uh, you know, July 8th, which, which is yes, yesterday or two days ago, teams were officially allowed to report back for official workouts in from there, you're right around the corner when it comes to camp season. So people just want to know what to expect. Will they have a season? Will they not have a season? That's something that still will be to, to determine. But now we have some type of guidance, something to expect. The interesting thing that you have to look at is how will these conferences adjust their scheduling? Because I'm pretty sure if you're going to do conference-only scheduling, Majority of these uh, teams are going to want at least 10 games to get that revenue. When you have the SEC who only has eight conference games and then the Pac-12 or eight or nine and then the Big Ten with nine and the Pac-12 and the Big 12, how would they do that? Um, that's something to be determined. But I think it's going to create a situation where you're going to have crossover games added to the schedule to try to fill out at least nine or 10 games for everyone in the country. What I really find interesting about this, everybody's going to who wanted a, you know a complete season, and we all wanted a complete season. But the you know the people that are going to be upset about this news and were upset about this news yesterday, I think need to remember, all of Ohio State's main goals are still on the table as they would be any other season. The goal is never let's see if we can go three and zero in the non conference schedule. You know that's that's a goal to get to the main goals. What are the main goals in order? Um, well, I shouldn't say in order, you know, beating Michigan might, might be the number one goal period, but really it's beat Michigan, win the big 10 championship, win the national title. And if you don't get number three, at least get in the playoff and compete for the national title. Or, you know, at the very, at the very least, you know, your hits could be in a Buckeye fan. What I'm saying at the very least, get to a great bowl game, like the Rose bowl. That's not a member of that particular year. It's not in the college football playoff like it was in 2018 during the Dwayne Haskins season. So 
you know, the, the goals are still on the table for Ohio State. I, I'm with you, man. I think, that, if anything, this is good news. They're still planning on having a season. This gives them more time to figure things out. And all of Ohio State's biggest goals are still on the table. Absolutely. And I think the key thing that you said is it gives them time to figure things out. Now that you have a plan, you can start getting the ducks lined up. The one thing that you have to uh, give Ohio State – uh, president who just left is he was pushing for the Big Ten to have universal COVID testing, which they do not have now. One of the, the main things that you have to have is some form of some form of plan and protocols in place. When when will teams be testing their players during the season? And if someone tests positive, what's the protocol there? The Big Ten now can go ahead and say, all right, we're going to have our conference only schedule. We're going to throw some bye weeks in there just in case to be safe. Uh, maybe extend the championship out, you know, a week or two just to give, a, give us a little grace period. But now they can start really lining up how they plan on handling all of the situations that's going to pop up here because they're not going to be able to address everything. But if as long as they have some type of guidance in place, it's going to be uh, it's going to be good for the conference. But Ohio State, all of the goals are there. All of the goals are there. The, the thing that it really hurts is, and you hate to see it, is a lot of these MAC schools, they're going to take a financial beating here because I don't know what the contracts and the clauses are going to be. Uh, that's going to be up to a lot of the, the big programs, attorneys. But a lot of these smaller schools, they need that revenue in order to survive. So Bowling Green playing at Ohio State, that was their payday there, and that's going to, that money is essentially was to fund a lot of their athletic program. Uh, I'm not sure how those, how those programs are going to survive if they're not going to get those paydays, but as far as Ohio State, just win the Big Ten. And if there's a situation where they can get Michigan twice on the schedule in order to get to that, that, 10, that 10 game schedule, I'm all for it. Yeah, the thing about the non-revenue sports just breaks my heart. I mean, we've already seen it across the country. Now the floodgates are going to open because, as you mentioned, I mean, Bowling Green was always already having trouble before this. They uh, initially had disbanded their baseball program, because, but because a bunch of boosters stepped up, including guys that had played in the major leagues um, and, and just other guys that have made it in business, um, you know, the boosters stepped up and saved the baseball program at Bowling Green. And this is when they thought they were going to get that big payday from Ohio State. And that's just one of many examples. So you got to think about all of these, you know, you know, non-revenue sports programs that are probably going to go away and hopefully not go away forever. Um, but usually when they disband a program, I mean, sometimes they come back, you know, like, you know, like I mentioned with Bowling Green baseball and UAB football went away for a couple of years and came back. But usually when they disband a, you know, a program at a college, it, it usually doesn't come back. It's, it's so very sad. Uh, switching gears, the news yesterday about the Big Ten uh, only playing a conference schedule came on the heels of the news Wednesday that we broke on Bucknuts that Ohio State's voluntary workouts for football, they're going to pause that for at least a week because multiple players had tested positive for the coronavirus. And it wasn't just football players, for those that don't know. Now, I heard some of them were football players. Less than 10 is the number I heard. More than three, less than 10. Um, so that narrows it down a little bit there. So it's not a big breakout like we saw at Clemson. And some other sports that are on campus, you know, women's basketball, you know, men's basketball, I believe volleyball's on campus, uh, maybe some others. Um, so it's spread out amongst those sports, and Ohio State's not going to be specific about it, and I don't mind that. What I do find interesting is Ohio State putting uh, football workouts on hold for at least a week, Jay Book, because Clemson's had at least 37 players test positive, and they, to my knowledge, have not had any break in their team workouts. Now, obviously, the guys that tested positive went in quarantine, but do you – do you find it interesting that Ohio State, with a relatively small number of positive cases, decided to, to take a week off at least? I'm not surprised, and I think it's the right move by Gene and, and Ryan and, and Mickey Marotti. I think at this time you want to be able to limit the amount of exposure and break out because you look at Clemson and you look at North Carolina, who just announced they also have 37 players and coaches who have been tested positive. So if you can try to limit the amount of exposure and keep keep guys relatively healthy there, then taking a week off right now this early on in July is definitely worth it. I just think Ohio State, they're going to play a safe regardless. It's a, 
the university and an athletic program who takes the student athletes well-being very seriously, especially under Gene Smith leadership. So them being cautious is definitely something that I expect from them. Fingers crossed that it just doesn't go run rampant uh, like you're seeing at other programs. But I think Ohio State, they're definitely going to do their due diligence. And at the same time, I don't think it's a great look for Clemson to not suspend workouts when you have that many kids testing positive. I mean, these kids aren't being paid. And if you're telling me you're, their workouts are that important that you're you're still going to expose other people who may be asymptomatic, I think it's a little reckless on their part, but that's just my opinion. People have joked about this, and people have also said it completely seriously. Um, what do you make of the idea that Clemson, not that they were initially going to try and do this, but since they had so many players get it, they decided, well, let's see, you know, might as well get it now. Now, doctors will tell you that there's no guarantee that if you get the coronavirus once that you're immune to it. They say it's very likely that you're immune to it, but that's not been proven yet. Let's say for the sake of argument that you, you are immune to it. What do you make of, of that, that Clemson might be saying, well, better the players get it now than get it in September. Yeah, I, I had talked about that, you know, on social media a couple of weeks ago, and it was brought up by Mark Packer on ESPN on his college football show. And Mark is a Clemson guy, by the way, who said, hey, he, you know, he's talked to numerous college coaches, and they actually said they would rather their players, if they're going to get it, get it now and get it over with. And as you mentioned, there's not enough significant data and information to say, hey, once you have the antibodies that you're good to go going forward. What I've seen lately is that, yes, you may have the antibodies, but it could be good for a few months at the most. Well, a lot of college coaches are saying, well, if you're going to tell me my guys are going to be good to go for at least two to three months, which will cover pretty much the football season until they have that layoff, until the, the playoffs or the bowl games, then sign me up. Even though that, that shouldn't be a way of thinking, because you always want to make sure that you're protecting your student athletes, especially these guys that are they are amateurs. Um, but at the same time, I understand what people are saying on that front because it, it, you're going to get it sooner or later is my thinking. When you get it is going to be the, the big storyline because if you have a situation where you have a, a huge marquee game, let's say, you know, number two, Ohio State versus – you know, number, number eight, West uh, Penn State or something like that. And then Justin Field goes down with COVID and he's out that game. And now you have C.J. Stroud. That's a huge storyline for college football. And I think that's a scenario that you can actually see played out. I, I've heard people say, looking at it as the, the, the dis disabled list in baseball or guys going down for in professional sports where they put DNP did not participate because of COVID or something. You're probably going to see that all throughout sports where guys are out of the lineup because they tested positive. On Wednesday, news broke that the Ivy League decided to not have fall sports at all this year. And there's still, you know, we're still not clear if that means the Ivy League is going to have spring football. Really, it would be late winter, early spring football if they want any of their guys to get drafted. And every, every year, there's a few Ivy League guys that get drafted. They might not care about that. They might just have a spring league. And it would really be a spring league that marks, marks through May, so to speak. Um, but uh, I'm just curious to get your reaction. Uh, you played for Ohio University, so you were a you know step up from one double A, of course. But still, play you know, there's been some good football over the years in the Ivy League. Um, what's your uh, rea what was your reaction to the Ivy League deciding not to have uh, fall sports this year? Yeah, that was kind of expected. If you have read the tea leaves, they were throwing that out there uh, a while ago, where they were just kind of trying to take the pause. But with the Ivy League essentially saying that they're doing all remote learning there is no shot for them to be playing any sports. And they haven't announced if they're actually going to do spring football. Uh, the one thing you have to like is they're saying that players will still be able to, re to retain their eligibility and their school will still be paid for um, as far as, you know, their grants and aids, because I don't believe the Ivy League offers actual scholarships in sports. Uh, but with that being said, it, it'd be something to watch in the spring if they decide to, to do that. I don't think that that's something that can be done in the Power Five conference because of any everything with the, the NFL draft. And I heard your segment on the Carpenter Rothman show where you touched on it as well, just the timing of 
spring spring sports for football just wouldn't work because there's no way your star athletes who are draft eligible will participate. So the, the quality of the, of the football in the game will take a significant hit. Yeah, and I, I just continue to think the idea of spring football, as I've said on this show and, and others that, uh, you know, as you mentioned, that I, I just don't think it's feasible. But then again, if it's that or nothing, I, I would take that over no football at all. But I just, yeah, with um, they would have to start it in January to get a, even a truncated season in if you're going to get it in before the NFL draft. I'm still confused why the NFL wouldn't work with college football if it came down to it. But the NFL's already said we're not pushing our draft back. The NFL has a free minor league in college football. Now, maybe, I, I guess last thing here, you think if college football came to the NFL, even though the NFL has already said we have no interest in pushing our draft back and said, listen, we've been pretty good partners for you guys. We have a free minor league here. Can you push the draft back until June? You think there's any chance the NFL would listen? I think they would at that point. They they would have no choice but to listen. <laughs> I mean, I know the NFL is pretty bullheaded, but logically it would make sense to push the draft back. Uh, I don't understand why they would make it hard for everyone else because at that point, kids need to – after the season is done, kids will need to decide if they're leaving to go to the NFL or if they're going to come back to school. If you're going it, – it does them no service to have them rush that decision and then the draft is boom right around the corner. I don't see why a lot of a lot of NFL programs wouldn't want to push it back just so that they can make sure that kids are making the right decision and they're getting their proper evaluations. I say this too, I lied to you. I, I, I do want to get your thoughts on this. Let's say for some reason, again, I don't think it's going to happen. The NFL says we're going to push our draft back. And college football says, great, we're going to have our season from, you know, March until June. And okay, great. Everybody's happy, right? We get a quote unquote 2020 college football season in, in the spring of 2021. Are we really going to ask those kids to take like a month or two off, then report to camp and then play another full season of a violent sport? Even if, it, even if the, the spring idea happened, what would that mean for the fall season of 2021? Are you going to push that back too? That's why, again, it's just another reason I don't think it's a feasible idea. That, and I don't think the NFL's players union will allow it. I think if it's not in the best interest of the health of the, of the players and the, and the athletes that you're asking their body to take that type of pounding. Some of these kids, it takes them a while to recover, and you're asking them to, hey, boom, turn around, go play college football, and then head right into a grown men's sport in the NFL. That's just a lot to ask from someone. Uh, but I, I don't think that spring football in the Power Five, I don't think it's something that can be done. Obviously, if they if things turn south really bad here and they still want that TV revenue, they'll try to explore it. But I think my personal opinion is they will cancel before they do that. Because like you said, every everything on the calendar is now pushed back. It's now pushed back for the college football season and you're rushing right back to get in, into college football season after spring football as well as the NFL. All right, no more lying from me. I will let you go now. Great stuff as always from Jonah Booker. Really appreciate it. Jay Book. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's try that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Oh.